Hi everybody, my name is Daryl Ekman, Ekman Wealth Management, and today I want to talk to you all about the financial crisis of 2008, uh, otherwise known as the Great Recession, why it happened, how did it happen, uh, maybe a few things of what we can learn from that. This is all the way back to 2008, and arguably we still are feeling the same effects from that period of time. Um, so it goes all the way back to the Clinton administration. Uh, there's plenty of blame to go around, but the Clinton administration wanted to increase owner occupancy uh, of houses in this uh, country from 60% to 70%. So uh, the housing lending laws were relaxed during that period of time. People were uh, applying for mortgages to qualify with just stated income, which means whatever they put down <clears throat> on their mortgage applications through a mortgage lender, uh, they would just put down whatever they um, thought they could sort of get away with. I hate to put it that way, but there was a lot of uh, falsification or exaggeration of income. And that at that time uh, was not uh, caught, uh, it wasn't verified, so just stated income. Didn't have to supply 1099s or anything like that. That coupled with low interest rates, uh, I think really hastened uh, the real estate market. It started to inflate, and we had what was called subprime sub loans. And that was for people that w had poor credit, and they were trying to get a house, and so the banks would charge a little higher interest rate. And even though the people were, um, I guess, um, there was more risk involved that they would default. So that happened, and it just started to set this thing in motion. Uh, fast forwarding to the Bush administration, and this was not corrected during the Bush administration. Things were kind of kept pretty much as is. Things were going well. We had an economic boom from uh, 2000. Uh, well, I, I would say all the way up to 2008, there was this great incline. You saw housing prices going up by large single digits and in some years double digits. And so you had these uh, very low interest rates and things were just going great. Well, there, there was a bump in the road that hit. Eventually, that was going to have uh, an impact that just absolutely rippled through the entire financial system because real estate is so much involved with so many things in the overall financial system. And it came um, out of the borders of this country into, well, it was already be being done. Same kind of thing we replica replicated in other countries. And so it went through the entire banking system. So then came uh, the, the banks were failing, uh, the small banks were all failing, the large banks uh, were going through what was called the asset test, uh, the Fed, the, the uh, banking system, or the, the bank regulators were shutting down the small banks and there was a huge bailout in the big banks. Uh, there was testimony before Congress, it was just very acrimonious, it was crazy. Um, it, I can remember uh, sitting at my desk there, I think I was at Piper Jaffray at the time, and I remember seeing money being transferred from this area to that area. People were even wondering whether the U.S. government uh, treasuries were a good place to have their money. Uh, it was going into gold for a few days. It was, it was really quite maddening, and it was really actually as a financial advisor at my level, and I would say even up the chain, there were a number of people that were just scratching their head trying to figure out what was going on. As the Secretary of Treasury under George Bush, the Bush administration went to Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and uh, he was asking for, I believe it was the figure was $800 billion for the bailout. Uh, and then there was uh, uh, another something like $700 billion that was reduced to $475 billion uh, that was later uh, added to that. I think it might have been the premier, the, the, the beginning of the Obama administration. So we had this 
this issue that was going on, it continued on. Um, there was um, nobody was buying any homes at that time. There were only selling going on. The banks were pulling in their uh, their lending practices, and you had bank examiners actually sitting right next to the loan officers. What little activity that was going on in the bank had, banking the bank examiners were really in, not in the business of making loans and their job was really to uh, not make a loan actually finding the ways that they wouldn't be so we had the stock market that corrected to the point where we saw uh, 40 and 50 percent retraction of the major indices and bank stocks were down uh, 80 percent um, it was just mayhem. We saw failures in Freddie Mac, uh, Fannie Mae, which are quasi-governmental agencies. Uh, we saw Lehman Fold, Lehman Brothers, AIG. Uh, it was just very not pretty. And so uh, that's the Fed started what was called quantitative easing at that time. There was a lot of heavy-handedness uh, with the Sar Sarbanes-Oxley uh, initiative that was put into place about a six foot tall uh, page 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 of legislation that was put into place so then you had actually now a whole group of lawyers attorneys that were coming in to the banking system and also uh, advising the remaining banks and what they had to do so um, I'm gonna stop there and just lead you to your own conclusions on how that was. In fact, I probably will do a, a, uh, a follow-up on this at some point in time and talk about uh, how we have been, we have worked our way out of it, but there still is some remnants of the financial crisis of 2008. Thank you.